The Sci Fora Film Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, let us pray. Or something. Anyway. Uh, hello and welcome to the uh, Sifora Film Podcast. I am, uh, and he is, and we are. And together, we might be. So, onwards. Um, hello, Scott, how are you doing? I was fine until you said that. You made my head hurt. <laughs> um, I'm all right. Um, Recovering from heat stroke. Recovering from heat stroke. That's what you get for pl playing out in the in the sun all the time. I was doing work and spending two days out in the sun for eight hours. And get, yourself a, get yourself a net. I've got one. Problem is, it didn't work. So yes. I ended up roasting myself. And Base, baseball cap and, a, and lots of lots of uh, after sun. No, not after sun. The other one. Yeah. Okay. Sun cream, that's the key. Yeah, no, I, I, I had a hat and everything, and it just... Cover yourself in that stuff. What's that stuff called? Brown piss or something, isn't it? Piz Brun. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah brown piss. Brown piss. Things. Really um, confused me for now. But yeah, no, I'm all right. No, I'm just... Good, good. Right, this week we are... Uh, no, we're not representing at all. Representing two films. Right, this, this week we are reviewing two films. Uh, one of them is a film which is, um, they, they both have connections to the uh, Romford Film Festival. Uh, the first one is a, is a film which is in the uh, Romford, the main Romford Film Festival, which is going on next weekend. And uh, the second one is one that was on at the Romford Horror Film Festival. So we will start off with the first one as that is most logical place to start. Uh, this is a 2019 film from Singapore uh, called Repossession. Yes. Uh, it's, it's listed as being a thriller horror. Okay, we'll go with it. Uh, the directors were Ming Su Go, who uh, has done uh, lots of, he did lots of TV series and short films in the early 2000s. Uh, this is his first feature film. Uh, and also Scott C. Hilliard. Uh, again, uh, this is his first feature film. Before this, he was acting. The two of them also co-wrote the story. So there you go. Uh, the cast, we have Gerald Chu, who again did lots of TV series and shorts from 90s, 2000s, 2010s and 2020s. And he was in a film called Cyber Wars in 2004. Uh, Amy Cheng. Again, she did lots of TV series and short movies from the 90s, 2000s, 2010s. Uh, then we have, I do this, don't I? And then we have Sivakuma Palakrishnan. I think that's right. Who did, again, lots of TV series and short films, 2000s, 2010s, 2020s. Rachel Wan, TV series in 2020s and 2010s. Uh, Matthew Liu. Uh, did some shorts and TV films in the 2010s. Andrew Lua, uh, again, TV series, 2010s, 2010s, 2020s. Jennifer Ebron, same TV series. And, so, yeah. and then Daniel Jenkins, who was in Robotropolis in 2011, um, After Images in 2014, and... Um, the Offering, which was also known as The Faith of Anna Walters in 2016, uh, as well as doing TV series and stuff like that. There are a few other people, but those are the main sort of characters, really. Uh, the synopsis for this film says, 50-year-old uh, Jim has constructed a perfect life in the world's most expensive city. 
When he is unexpectedly laid off, he desperately clings on to the symbols of his success, whilst wrestling with resurfacing surfacing demons from his past. So, what did you think? I, I really like this film. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's just, um, you know, it's just it's like the whole way through it, it confused the life out of me so much about whether or not it was a horror or whether or not it was just his head or if it was um, due to like and him stre the stress of stuff that's going on with making him see things and then with everything going on, it just I loved everything because he was just constant twists about it and it was uh, a lot of um, there was bits of folklore and stuff like that brought into it as well, which I liked and for the same, it just it seemed like such an amazing film and just I don't know, just there was something about it. I, it just drew me into it. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, I mean, I think the beginning was interesting because they used like a voiceover thing over the credits, which it used is really good. The um, they they use a lot of sound effects and music to build up the tension, and yeah. then kind of the, the interesting thing about it is it builds the tension up and builds the tension up, and nothing really happens. But you never lose that feeling of tension. Yeah, it, it, it filled up like a whole way through it. Gonna happen. Mm. It's, it's uh, the figures as well. There, there were slight little things as well. Like it, um, the first time that he see you, you see the figure. Sorry, one of the figures in the window. Yeah, I sat there and I sat there for ages. Go, what's he staring at? And I sat, I sat there and I didn't know if it was. And I, I had to go back because obviously I see it, see it properly. And I was trying to figure out whether or not it was because of the brightness I had my screen or whatever. But, it it was very subtly sort of drawn in, and yeah. but the music helped build it all up, and I thought it was so well done with all of it. It was, it was. There, there's there's a couple of strange things that I found in it. Um, they used these occasional subtitles. Hmm. It's not subtitled all the way through the film because it's in English, but every now and again there's a few little lines that are said that they have subtitles for. Which is a little bit off-putting, a little bit distracting, but it's, it's yeah. not too bad. Um, I will, I will say though, this film does prove my theory about the fact that chopsticks are used for evil, <laughs> or to fight evil at least. They, they did be. in this. They can be. They're not. Can they're be. not used for food at all. They're <laughs> used for fighting evil. There's a couple of bits in it where the, the visuals kind of skip. Yeah, it's interesting because they're meant. I mean, it looks like they're meant to do that, and it really works well. It's really good. It just sort of like they just kind of skip forward a bit as if it's like in fast. It's like it goes in fast motion just for a, yeah. a second, and then it's really good. It it's almost like there are some bits missing from the film though, because it jumps backwards and forwards a few times. Without giving away the ending. Yeah, about it. it. When you get to the ending of it, that bit sort of makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. of the fact that what's going on, he he's the it's obviously being told through his eyes and what he re represent him. So if he's not remembering what's going on, he's then right. not showing. And I think that's very well done because he's right. Like I did the same thing. I thought, oh, it's a really dodgy editing, or it's meant to be like. And then it's right up to the end where he what happens at, at the end, and I was like, oh, maybe that explains. The jumping bit. Yeah, yeah. I did really like the uh, the exorcism scene. Yeah, which is towards the end. That that was really well done. That's that's really well put together and really well done. And I love the ending. The, the, the bit right at the end. I really like the fact that it suddenly goes silent. I, do you know what? I genuinely, I genuinely thought I managed to break my tablet. And it, it, it was dead silent. I was like. Oh no, I've done something. So I had to stop it and go back. And it's just, it is amazing because it's you sit there for ages and the, the, for me, the silence drew me in so much. And then when that music come up or when it goes then silent, you hear the faint music. Yeah, yeah. It's so eerie. It's brilliant. I I think it's a really, really well made film. I I the acting is good. I can't I I, I couldn't fault it for anything really. There was no, I will say though, it does uh, what I think helps with this 
it's the filming location. Singapore is just, it's just an amazing location. Oh, yeah. Even with the, what's going on in this film, it is so well fit, like, shot for our bits and the, the beauty of certain shots that they do almost pulls away from the sort of darkness that's going on and okay. gives you that sort of different feeling about it. And I love the way it's done. Well, I, I, yeah, no, I agree. I think it's a great, excellent see, uh, scenery and all that sort of thing. Great place to film. The other thing I like about it is the fact that it's um, it's the way it's put together, the way it's done. It, there are elements of kind of very natural uh, life things going on, and mm. and and even quite funny bits in a few places. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, it's like comedy bits and things like that and you kind of think well it's really good because it's quite a deep and intense film a little bit slow for some people maybe but it's quite a deep and intense film and uh, i think i have those other bits in as well kind of lifts it a little bit i was saying about the slowness bit of it i think that makes it better because of the fact it's not such a fast-paced film it it draws you in a lot more you get a lot more um connection with the characters and feeling with it <laughs> and <laughs> It made, for me, it, it drew me to sort of feeling how he was feeling with the sort of stress of, or I'm trying try to understand how he was yeah. stressing out for things. Yeah. I mean, the only <sighs> thing I would say is there's, there's a kind of expectation with, um, with any kind of Asian horror film. There's a kind of expectation uh, based a lot on the kind of like the... Uh, the stuff that comes from Taiwan, places like that, which is that it's it's going to be quite bloody or it's going to be quite action packed, yeah. and like that. And this isn't, but it no. works so well the way it's done. It's, it's the thing is that with the blood bits in it that are in it, it's very subtly done as well. Yeah. It's not like in your face, and it it's it gives you like little bits just for you to know what's happened. It's not part of it when uh, the salt there and him and. He's uh, even the, one of his friends when they were in the, the army. Yeah. What happens there is the fact that he wasn't like he shot himself and it wasn't massive blood splatters everywhere. It was just trickles down his face, and I was like, "Wow!" Because that was more powerful than having blood splatter everywhere. Absolutely, yeah. No, it, it, it's it's re- it's a very well put together, very well made film. Um, yeah, they, they, I think. Considering it's come from two people who, uh, for this is their first feature film that they've made, uh, yeah. and that they co-wrote, co-wrote it, and, and I, I think it's quite incredible, to be honest. It and is. as far as I know, it's 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 not been made on a huge budget either. No. So you know, it's um, it stands up really well against against a lot of other films. You know, that it is, been, and I really like out. I like the idea behind it as well. It's not a from what I, from what I, I'm trying, trying to wrap my brain through, all the films I've seen from different cultures and stuff like that, it's not sort of a, a typical what like horror story. No, no, it's not. Like, especially when it involves certain folk folklores, and then that's normally when it's a bit more bloody and stuff like that. This is the sort of a very subtle history um, mythology thing that happens in it, and it just happens to coincide with what's going on in this man's life. Yeah, yeah. And I think the title is brilliant because of the fact that it's like sort of he loses his job. It looks like everything's going to happen when he's going to lose his home and everything. He's going to lose his car and all that sort of thing. And then you get the thing about him fighting these demons, which, let's face it, are very personal. And yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the thing. That's what I thought. I sat there and thought, I thought, well, the right name of this, oh, it is. <clears throat> it's going to be like him going on a spiral because he's had everything taken off him. He's had his home yeah. repossessed. Uh, he's had to sell his car. And I thought, oh, maybe this is going to be the horror bit of him. is going to be on a spiral and yeah. like, the way that it looked like he was going to take his life and everything like that. And then when the, the darkness started happening with the, the demon that started coming out, and I was like, okay, maybe that's to do with the depression side of it. You're starting to see yeah. things. And then about t- half an hour from the ending, yeah. When it all started again, no, we're just here to play games on you. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay, this is the bit he meant about a repossession, not yeah. the, having stuff taken away from him. Yeah, well, it's got that double meaning, that double double edge thing. It's uh, yeah. it kind of, uh, I, don't, I don't know, it's really weird because you've got the horror of this guy's life falling apart around him, mixed with the horror, the actual horror, if you like, of these these these, uh, these demons. I will, I I think, will say as well, 
the demon or whatever it was. I sat there for ages trying to figure out if it was an actor or if it was CGI. It was so well done. Oh, yeah. The acting alongside with it is what made me think it was a normal actor. Yeah, I, I don't, I really don't know, but I, I no. mean, it was very well done. And it, it's, it's a very different looking sort of demon as well. It's not, a, yeah, it's just know, a shadow, really. You can't yeah. actually see anything other than this, this shadow body. Yeah. It, it, it was, it was really well done. I, I really applaud them. I think it was, it's well worth watching. And, and uh, if you go, I mean, if you're going to go to the Romford Film Festival, watch out for this film because it really is yeah. worth a watch it's 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 uh it's got everything going for it and i i i think it will do well there and i think it may well win a, a, an award or two if it doesn't uh, if they put it into anywhere else and it doesn't just at romford it should do somewhere it, it, it deserves yeah. to it's Definitely. such an amazing film it is really really good i'm really pleased that they asked us to to, to review it and to check and it out. I was, uh, I've got to be, I was a bit dubious when you when you first said to me, "How did you in touch with us?" And it's when you said it wasn't part of the horror film festival, and I was like, "Oh, okay." But I genuinely think that this should have been. Well, yeah. the fact that it's part of the normal one, so a lot well, more they, people they keep, see it. They keep a few uh, back so they can do one day of yeah. the normal film festival as a horror. Well, day. I'd, I'm. Out of the ones that you told me about and the ones that I've seen from it, I'm glad they chose this one to keep for everyone to have a chance to see. Yeah. It yeah. is such an amazing film. It is really, really good. Yes. So watch out for Repossession. When it's uh, actually put out uh, for um, uh, release, we, you'll be able to find out. Uh, all the details for it are on IMDb if you, you want to check them out. And then they'll have on there about the details about it being released to video or blu-ray or whatever they're going to do with it whether it's going to go to cinema or, or straight to dvd I don't know. right our second film was actually shown at the uh the romford horror film festival um it was at that point it was called wyvern hill it's been retitled uh hollow uh and it's been released in, i think it has now been released in america on dvd uh with that name um and it's uh going to be released over here a little bit later in the year I'm not sure exactly when but again they're on imdb all of this uh, the information will be on imdb and i can put links to those up onto the the thing so people can find out more about the films uh, and see when it's coming out so uh this as i say is called hollow and it um the director is Jonathan Zorin, uh, who did uh, shorts in lots of short films in 2010s. He did a film called uh, Gore Grind in 2020, uh, a section of a film called Blood Tales in 2020. And he's also done uh, The Sunset Dogs and Sold. Uh, the writer was Keith Temple, who has done writing for lots of TV series in the 1990s and 2000s, and this is the first feature film written. Uh, the cast is uh, Pat Garrett, who has done a few shorts in 2010s and has now done a film called Lure. Um, Pete Bird, who did uh, some shorts in 2010s and, was in, and is in the Sunset Dogs. Uh, Ellie Jeffries, who did some TV series and shorts in 2010s to 2020s. There's a film called Temptation in 2009, Stagger in 2009, and Angry Nazi Zombies in 2012, which I want, really want to watch just because it's called that. <laughs> um, we have Ben Manning, who was in some shorts in 2010s and 2020s. Uh, the Snarling in 2018, what a great title it is. Uh, Cleavers, Killer Clowns in 2019, and Crucible of the Vampire in 2019. Um, also in The Sunset Dogs and The Last Twitch. Uh, and I've got to talk about these two short films that Ben Madding is in, just because of the titles. I want to find out more about them. We've got Vambi, which is a vampire zombie, and a film yeah. called Half Man, Half Sweet Corn. Oh, 
I've just I've I was looking up his IMDb page as you said that, and I've just read the synopsis for that film. We need to watch it. Yes. <laughs> uh, so then we've got Michael Coombs, who was in some short films in the 2010s. He was in Blood Tales in 2020 and Sunset Dogs. And uh, Pablo Raybold, who was in TV series in 2000s, 2010s, 2020s. He was in The Facebook of Eddie Brewer in 2012. Evil Bread in 2013, The Snarling in 2018, Pandemonium in 2020, The Last Twitch, and The Pocket Film of Superstitions. And he was also in Vambi and Half Man, Half Sweet Corn. Um, right. <laughs> the, the synopsis for this film, Hollow, says, a series of gruesome killings is shaking Herefordshire. Beth... A mother in her 60s is showing signs of early Alzheimer's. Worried about her, her daughter Jess and son-in-law Connor try to find a way to help her. Together they purchase an old house on Wyvern Hill so that she can move in with them and be looked after. However, her symptoms and slow loss of reality render Beth unable to realise that something has moved in with her, observing her every move and preparing in the darkness of Wyvern Hill. Now, I'm going to start off with a bit of a rant here. <laughs> I know what this is going to be about. This should be interesting. I have seen some people doing reviews of this film who just do not get it. I don't know what they were expecting but they seem to be, I don't know, they seem to think this film is rubbish and that they, I love this film. I absolutely love it. For me, it was the best feature film at the, uh, the, the Romford Horror Film Festival. It's a brilliant depiction of somebody suffering from the early stages of Alzheimer and, and how quickly it can take a person's life over. And for me, there are times when it's like there are times when it's almost like you're watching two or three different films because there's so much going on, but they're going on slowly. Yeah, <laughs> weird. And then they all slowly merge together, and the end section is absolutely fantastic. It, yeah. The end segment of this film is just brilliant. I, mm. I loved it. Whole the whole thing. It, it, as I say, it's, it's a bit slow. It's not a slasher movie. It's not your typical horror movie. It's well thought out, well written, well paced, and takes some time to get to where it's going. But when it gets there, it's really worth it. Yeah. Um, I think the acting in it is brilliant, and Pat Garrett got a, uh, a, a an award for her acting at the Romford Film Festival, and I think it was so well-deserved. Yes. Uh, and I, I really do. I just think, I think the film's brilliant. That's my rant over. And the thing is, I completely agree with you. It, it, there are bits of it that, if you're just watching it for the sake of the fact it's a horror, it can be a bit confusing. Yeah. But you need to look into more into it. It's not just about that. There's stuff going on throughout the whole film that you need to pay attention to. Like, like I said, the whole, the, the starting for her, herself and for everyone around her to start realising that she had onset dementia and to the fact that it tells you in a part of the film that she actually admits to it, which is so hard for a lot of people who've got it yeah. to actually be able to admit to it and understand that that's what they're going and not. Doing. But it also shows the fact that it can, it can be very, very progressive, very, very quickly. And it can change the person that they are within days, months, the thing I liked about this, though, is the fact that it's difficult to tell at times for both yeah. for her and for us watching it yeah. what is reality and what is just what she's imagining. Well, that's exactly what I, I was. I, I thought as well was the fact that you sit there at one point, and because of the stuff that's going on, you sit there and it's only the same. It's only until the the end, really, that you start realizing that it's not a hundred percent in her head. Yeah, that there are things going on. Okay, yeah, the ending, it still doesn't fully explain what's going on. It doesn't explain the fact that it's definitely killers or it's definitely... It could just be the fact that it's all in her head and she's just thinking this is what's going on. Yeah. 
But I love the fact that he keeps you guessing until the very last minute. And it's the fact that as well that the bit in it where she's trying to convince them that it's not her not her that's stuff that's going on that because of the fact that they think that she's got this dementia she doesn't remember. But yeah. she's trying so hard to prove that it's not her and then starting to think that maybe it is herself and starting to doubt herself. Yeah. yeah. I, t- I totally agree with you. I think that the fact that she got Best Actor in this and won the award for it, I, it's so well deserved. Absolutely. It is amazing. All okay. the acting in this, really. But again, yeah. Ben's, Ben's acting in this, I've seen him in other films, and it really genuinely scares me how well he plays yeah. deranged people. Yeah, I mean, if you watch this film and you look at it and you go, okay, <clears throat> is, it, is it a perfect film? Is it a, an amazing film with amazing effects? Probably not. It's a great story, well acted, well made. And you also got to take into consideration that by, by his, own, his own description of it, uh, Jonathan Zorin said that this film cost probably less than they spend on a lunch for most most films and it's, it was made the whole thing was made during covid during the lockdown yeah. of covid oh it's the thing is as well it, that's when you put that into effect you understand what else goes on in the in the rest of it it's why there's not like, big crowds in certain bits and why if you look at like when they're in the bar why they're they're still yeah there's still people there but they're spread out a bit further yeah it's still there and it's still the angle to certain shots, the way they've done, I think is yeah. so well done for what they, like you said, what they spent on it. I think for, for a, an independent film on a micro budget, at a time when we've got a global pandemic and everyone's in lockdown, this film is absolutely incredible. Yeah. I'm, I what I like about this is the fact that it wasn't, like, like you said, the blood and guts in it, and there wasn't that in it. There were, there were, there were some bloody bits in it, but it wasn't like thrown in your face and stuff like that. It was a, it was yeah, a more psychological horror, I would say. Yeah. But the bits that were in it were so well done as well. <clears throat> I will say I love and I want to find, want a copy of it just purely to put on my wall. But I want a copy of that mask. Yeah. The Mr. Punch mask that he wears, I want a copy of it. It is good, I must admit. Me, I, I've played a bit of this to Amy, and I do I do quite a good impression of Mr. Punch, and I always have fun. Amy's now told me that I am never banned from doing it. <laughs> because I'm not because of the fact that she see a picture of the doll that they made, she went, no, you can't do it anymore, because that's all the stuff I'm going to think of. But I love the whole bit about this. Everything yeah. about this is so well done and so and and there's the bits the the, the filming and the angles they had of the of um when she walked over the bit of glass yeah i i sat there and I, I could feel myself tensing up when she was getting close to it and i was like oh this is gonna hurt because i've been there i know what that feels like yeah and then when she finally does it i'm like oh i could feel my stomach turn because of the tension build up of it and the yeah, yeah. close calls of it i'm like oh this is gonna hurt it's, it's just amazing. It is. It's it's a subtle film. If you're expected to be punched in the face with your horror, it's never going to happen. But it's a well made, subtle film that's yeah. just got. It's got everything going for it, and I really don't understand why some people are rubbishing it in their reviews. And, and I don't know what they were expecting from it. I do know that the um, the distribution company. Of, of put out a, uh, a, a, a an advertising thing for it and all this kind of stuff, which may not necessarily sell it as well as it could. But then you know it, it's it's one one of those things. But I think if you go into this film with no expectations, yeah, it is a great film, and I think you will love it. If you if you go into expecting it to be a an out and out horror, you're never going to be happy. Yeah. If you go, yeah, I will. T- I, I agree. If you go into this film wanting or expecting to see blood and guts everywhere and slash and stuff like that, you are you, you you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. But if you go into watch it with an open mind and actually pay attention to what's going on, you will love this film. 
Absolutely. I, and I, I, I agree. I don't understand. I, I get the fact that, yeah, there's certain people out there that probably weren't expecting it to be the way it was, but they need to go back and rewatch it because there's obviously, they obviously didn't get the whole meaning behind the film. And mm. it's just, it's such a great film. It is a great film. I'd love it. And I've got, I would never, no problem watching it. Well, I had no problem watching it again. No, I, oh, this is the, this is the bit, is, I, this is my first time watching it. You got to watch it doing the film festival. And I, I sat there and you said to me, we're going to do this. I was like, well, this is going to be a bit weird for you because you've already done it and you know what's going to happen. But I sat there and I, I, like you told me what happened, what how the film was. And I went into this film, obviously knowing what you said, but I still sat there and I was so in awe of what was going on because it's Absolutely. just such a great film. Again, the location helps so oh, much. No. And it, as much as I love, or not, I don't love where I live, but I I grew up around here, but yeah. the countryside that he is filmed in is, just does it so much justice. Absolutely. It, it, it's a really, it, the, the, the countryside scenes and, the, and the, the buildings that they go to, and that's yeah. it's just so really the, well The church done. they go to, and even the cottage that they're in, yeah. is just so amazing. And I say, I just, it's, it's very, very good the way that, it's, that they do it, and the fact that it's like literally the last minute a last or well, last ten minutes, you, everything sort of wraps itself up. Yeah. It doesn't fully explain itself because of the fact that the way that she sort of goes off. Yeah, it's whether or not she still remembers if this is actually what's going on, or if this is. Yeah, I think it's part of what you know, it's one and a half dozen the other. It's partly yeah going on in the head, and partly what's going on in real life. But and that's the thing about it is it, for me, it's the kind of. The matching of the it's a they're a bit similar these two films because <clears throat> it's like with the first one it's the matching of the horror of having I mean, your life falling apart with the, the demon in this one it's matching of the horror of of um your mind falling apart and the horror of the the murderers who, who are kind of like picking on these people well, in the countryside so it's kind of like this dual aspect of horror the, the bit that i loved about it as well is and it was um Ben's character, the mm. line he gives where he they actually say that they they were watching and listening. And it when she says when she sits in the bar and says about the fact that she thinks she's got onset dementia, that's what made them. And I was like, the fact that there are it's again as much as it's a, a horror film, there are people out there that do that and target people. Yeah. They they know that they're suffering and will target them and make them feel this way. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that he's the same, the truth to life stuff that goes on, but yet it's still such a great film. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing is it, because so much of it is based in what we know to be reality, you know, and, and, and in both films, you know, it, it, there's so much of it that's based in real life situations. Yeah. Uh, which in themselves are horrific enough. And then the horror, on, the actual horror on top of that, it's just, it just so well done. I think both of these films are definitely worth watching and I really want to see more of what these people put together and what they do yeah. in the future. I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I'm hoping that they do, both of these people do a lot more stuff in the future. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see what they do. Well, yes, I agree. So there you go. Um, Hollow will be available in North America, um, is available in North America on DVD at the moment. Uh, again, as I say, I'll put up the link to IMDb and you can find out full details there. Uh, it will be released in the UK later in the year. Not sure about repossession. At the moment, it's still doing the, uh, the rounds of uh, film festivals, but hopefully uh, that will be available as well at some point. Uh, two great films really worth watching. Um, so there you go. Thank you very much, Scott. It's okay. Thank you for having me. Well, I didn't. Mummy did. Don't start this again. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, uh, go out and watch these films, or else I will come round and sit on you. Or something. Anyway, enough of this. Thank you very much, and uh, we will see you again with more of the same sort of type of thing. Well, uh, next. I was going to say, yeah, more of the same sort of thing. We won't be doing the same films over and over again because that'd be no, no, no. Same 
sort of thing though talking about films and stuff yes uh so we will see you next time that you see us but to be honest they won't we won't see them but uh, 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 we won't uh, see them but we'll know who they are uh, but will we uh, what <laughs> you confused me then no will we will we see them we might we uh -huh. might be able to hack their cameras who can tell all right then. anyway <laughs> bye bye the sci fora film podcast. Mm -hmm.